The universe is not a lawless, anarchic free-for-all. The great majority of the stars are organized into galaxies, which are separated from one another by enormous, almost incomprehensible distances. The region of space between galaxies is referred to as intergalactic space. Although sparsely inhabited, it is not wholly devoid of life. Even isolated stars are discovered in this region. Hey guys! Welcome back! In this video, let's take a closer look at an event happening in intergalactic space that completely amazes astronomers. But first, we are giving away $100 to one of our lucky subscribers. All you have to do is watch the entire video, leave a comment with your greatest takeaway, like, share, and subscribe. So without further ado, let's head into it. So, astronomers uncovered one of the most spectacular bursting stars in more than 400 years when they look back 30 years ago. Recently, photos captured by the Webb telescope revealed the most distant stars and galaxies in the large Magellanic Cloud. A picture has been obtained showing what seems to be a ring-like object in the star-forming area of the enormous Magellanic Cloud. The Hubble Space Telescope has already taken a picture of one of these objects. When zoomed in into a region of the large Magellanic Cloud abundant in star formation, an object that resembles a closed ring and is a supernova named 1987A may be observed. Does the object look like a ring have anything in common with a supernova? Let's find out. The giant supernova known as Supernova 1987A was discovered on February 23, 1987 and for several months after that, it burned with the intensity of 100 million suns. Since it was first located, SN1987A has mesmerized scientists with the dazzling light display it puts on. It is the closest supernova explosion that has been recorded in hundreds of years and it offers astronomers the finest opportunity they have had so far to examine the stages that occur before, during, or after the death of a star. Since 1990, hundreds of photographs have been acquired of SN1987A by the Hubble Space Telescope. In 1999, the Chandra X-ray Observatory started monitoring it shortly after its operation. Since the beginning of the ALMA project, a robust array consisting of 66 antennas has been gathering data on SN1987A at a high resolution using millimeter and submillimeter wavelengths. According to Robert Kirshner of the Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics in Cambridge, Massachusetts and the Gordon and Betty Moore Foundation in Palo Alto, California, the observations of SN1987A over the last 30 years are significant because they provide insight into the final stages of stellar evolution. The most current information from these impressive telescopes indicates that SN1987A has passed a significant milestone. The shockwave from the supernova moves past the dense ring of gas produced late in the star's life that became a supernova. This ring was created when a fast outflow or wind from the star collided with a slower wind generated during the star's earlier phase of evolution as a red giant. What lies beyond the ring is unclear at this time and relies on the specifics of the development of the star when it was a red giant. According to Kyrie Frank of Penn State University, who conducted the most current Chandra research of SN1987A, the intricacies of this transition will offer astronomers a more explicit knowledge of the life of the tragic star and how it perished. Supernovae such as SN1987A have the potential to steer the gas in their surroundings which may lead to the formation of new stars and planets. The gas that eventually forms these stars and planets will be enriched with elements such as carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and iron, which are the fundamental constituents of all known forms of life. These elements are produced within the star about to undergo a supernova and during the supernova's explosion. The expanding supernova leftovers are responsible for dispersing these elements across the host galaxy. Additional study on the SN1987A ought to give a fresh perspective on the first phases of this dispersal. Hubble's measurements indicate that the thick ring of gas that surrounds the supernova emits optical light and has a diameter of approximately one light year. The ring had already been in place at the star's explosion for 20,000 years. 
The ultraviolet light produced by the explosion energized the gas within the ring, causing it to glow for decades after the explosion. The center structure that was first only visible within the ring in the Hubble image has since grown to cover approximately one half of a light year. At a speed of around 20 million kilometers per hour, two blobs of debris at the core of the supernova remnant are moving away from each other. The data collected by Chandra between 1999 and 2013 showed that an expanding ring of X-ray emissions was steadily brightening over time. The blast wave from the initial explosion has been penetrating and heating the ring of gas that surrounds the supernova which has resulted in the emission of X-rays. The level of X-ray brightness emitted by the ring has reached a plateau in recent years. Since roughly February of 2013, when the first Chandra observation was examined, the overall amount of low-energy X-rays had stayed the same up until September of 2015, when it was done. In addition to that, the bottom left corner of the ring has started to lose its color. These alterations indicate that the blast wave from the explosion has migrated outside the ring and into a location with less dense gas. This event signifies the conclusion of an era for SN1987A. Astronomers started using ALMA in 2012 to investigate the luminous leftovers left behind by the supernova, exploring how the remnant is producing large quantities of new dust from the new elements made in the parent star. Some of this dust will be propelled into interstellar space where it may one day lay the groundwork for the formation of stars and planets in an entirely different solar system. This finding showed that the dust that existed in the early cosmos was most likely produced by supernovae explosions that were quite similar. Astronomers are scouring the area for any signs of a neutron star or black hole that may have been left behind by the explosion. They observed a burst of neutrinos coming from the star before becoming a supernova. The finding substantiates the hypothesis that a compact object, either a neutron star or a black hole, resulted from the collapse of the star's core. However, no observatory has yet found evidence for any of these possibilities. The configuration of Webb's mirrors and the filters they contain caused the dazzling star to take on a more fiery and jagged appearance. Nonetheless, the backdrop truly stole the show. According to Jane Rigby, a scientist working on the Webb Operations Project, you can't help but notice the hundreds of galaxies behind it. They are incredibly stunning. For billions and billions of years, these galaxies have been around. As she expressed it, scientists expect that Webb will one day be able to view so far away and back in time that it will only be a couple hundred million years after the Big Bang. What's next? NASA has indicated that the crew will finish the remaining alignment procedures for the JWST over the next six weeks before moving on to the final preparations for Steen's instrument. The telescope will get some new accessories, including a near-infrared spectrograph, a mid-infrared instrument, a near-infrared imager, and a slitless spectrograph. During this stage of the procedure, an algorithm will analyze the performance of each instrument and it will then compute the final corrections necessary to establish a well-aligned telescope across all scientific equipment. Once more, the optical brilliance of the telescope's optics was exhibited and the science activities that will soon begin are getting very close to getting underway. The flying observatory that is presently being tested has returned to the most recent test photographs over a neighboring satellite galaxy. The findings are astounding compared to images acquired by Spitzer Space Telescope, NASA's earlier infrared observatory. On the other hand, our goal was to track the planets, their satellites, asteroids, and comets that make up our solar system as they moved over the background stars of our galaxy. To acquire pictures and spectra, Webb has to have the capability to latch onto these objects and track them with sufficient precision. The examination validated Webb's capacity to carry out research with moving targets. As we move on with the commissioning process, we will conduct tests with various objects traveling at different speeds to guarantee that we will be able to use Webb to research things moving around the solar system. How long do you think these rings will exist? 1,000? 5,000? 10,000 years? I guess that will be a topic for another video here in Tech Revolution.
Thanks for watching up till the end of this video. I'd really appreciate it if you click the like, subscribe, and notification bell. Enjoy your day and I will see you in the next video.